Welcome back to AP Chemistry and this uh, complete AP Chemistry course. We are starting lesson two in this video, which is about chemical nomenclatures. And so in this video, we're going to start learning how to uh, name chemical compounds and then write formulas from those names. And so uh, the first thing that we want to remember is that molecular compounds, or some, sometimes called covalent compounds, have two nonmetals. And so what that means is if we have sulfur hexafluoride, we're going to use those numerical prefixes uh, to write the, the formula. So hexa means six, and so sulfur hexafluoride is just SF6. And then we can say the same thing for tetraphosphorus decoxide. Tetra means four, so tetraphosphorus is P4, and deca means 10, so decoxide would be O10. So P4O10. And say the same thing here. Boron is, of course, B. Tri means three, so trifluoride would be you know, BF3 in this formula. And hepta is one of those prefixes that sometimes students forget about. Hepta means seven, so iodine heptachloride is just ICL7, like that. And then selenium dibromide, well, di, of course, means two. And so this would be SI, or I'm sorry, SE, BR2. And so those are covalently bonded compounds, these compounds that have two nonmetals in them. Well, if we have compounds that have one metal and then one nonmetal in them, we're going to call those ionic compounds. And if they're binary and they don't have anything very unusual in them, it's very easy to name those. We just name the, the metal, and then we name the nonmetal and change that nonmetal's ending to IDE. So we have calcium bromide in this case. And Mg3N2 would just be magnesium nitride. Notice we're not doing anything with those subscripts there. This is not like uh, with the covalent compounds where we had to say tri or di or something like that. You know, if it's ionic, we just name the ions. We don't try to, to deal with those uh, subscripts. So Ag2S is not going to be disilver, it's just silver sulfide. And likewise, Na2O is going to be sodium oxide. And AlF3 will be aluminum fluoride. So those are the very simple uh, binary ionic compounds. And we can, of course, do some more practice here. ZnO is going to be zinc oxide, and we have lithium chloride. And hopefully by the time you see several of these, you'll be very quick at writing these, these formulas and naming these. MgI2 is just magnesium iodide. And BeO, of course, is beryllium oxide. And CS3P, kind of an unusual compound. We don't see that too often, but that's just cesium phosphide. And so we hopefully can see the difference between ionic compounds and molecular or covalent compounds. With covalent compounds, we use numerical prefixes like mono, di, tri, tetra, uh, penta, hexa, and so forth. With ionic compounds, we don't do that. So let's go on to something uh, perhaps a bit more complex here. We're going to write some formulas of ionic compounds. And so there are five steps involved here. The first step is to write the symbol or the formula for the cation and note its charge. Now, when we say cation, just as a reminder, that means it's positive. Okay, cations are always positive in nature, and they are also always written at the beginning of a compound or the beginning of a name. So cations always go first. The second step is to write the symbol or the formula for the anion and note its charge. So once again, as a reminder, anions are always negative in charge, and they always go at the end of a formula and the end of a name whenever we're writing these. So cations go first, and then anions go last. The third step is to take a look at those absolute values of the charges and compare them. If they're equal, then you're done, and you have the formula. Whereas if they're not equal, they don't cancel out, you have to swap the charges using the absolute values of the charges as subscripts in your formula. Step five is, is a rule we don't use all the time, but we use it 
enough that it's very important. Whenever you add a subscript to a polyatomic ion, you want to place parentheses around that polyatomic ion. So we'll see several examples of that here shortly. Let's try several examples. We'll start with some simple ones and work our way up to some more difficult examples. By the way, if you need an, an ion chart, you can find one in pretty much any chemistry textbook, but if you'd like to have one that's printable and at hand, you can head over to my uh, website, krugslist.org, krugslist.org, uh, K-R-U-G-S-L-I-S-T dot O-R-G, and click on AP Chemistry, and you can find my ion chart that you can print off and use as you write formulas and name compounds in this lesson. Well, let's do some examples here. We'll start with magnesium sulfate. Now, remember, our first step is to write the formula for that cation, that first part of the formula. So that's magnesium, which is Mg, and we have to note the charge on that. So if we look at the periodic table or at the ion chart I just showed you, magnesium has a positive 2 charge. So we write that down. Next, we have sulfate. Now, that's a polyatomic ion. Sulfate has a formula of SO4, and it has a charge of negative 2. So we have to compare those, and we notice that they cancel out. You know, the positive 2 has the same absolute value as negative 2. So according to our uh, rules here, that means that we're done. And so the formula for magnesium sulfate is just going to be Mg. SO4, so we can write that down. By the way, those charges up there, the plus 2 and the minus 2, those are actually not part of the formula. Those are just our notes that help us to write the formula. Now, the next example I have here is ammonium sulfide. So we'll, we'll go through the same process here. The formula for ammonium is NH4, and the charge on that is a positive 1. And then sulfide has the symbol S, and it has a charge of negative 2. So do those charges cancel? No, they don't. So that means we're going to have to go on to step 4 and swap them. So this 1 would go down here as the subscript on the S, but we don't write 1s, do we? We just kind of, uh, th those 1s are just understood to be there. Now the 2 can be placed down here on the ammonium, and this brings us up to step five, because we're placing an additional subscript onto a polyatomic ion. And so we're going to put parentheses around that to show that that two applies to the entire polyatomic ion, to the entire ammonium ion. Also, as an added bonus, it keeps that from looking like a 42, which would look kind of strange. So this is our formula for ammonium sulfide. We can go on to iron 2 nitrate. Now iron, of course, is Fe, so we'll write that down. And the charge on iron 2 is positive 2. Now, you might notice by looking at the ion chart that iron, that iron can have more than one possible charge. It can be either a plus 2 or a plus 3. Well, the, the 2 in Roman numerals tells us which one we're talking about. So that kind of gives away what the charge is. It's plus 2. Nitrate is NO3, that's a polyatomic ion, and it has a negative 1 charge. So looking at the charges, it looks like we have to swap them. So you, you don't write the 1, but the 2 goes down here, and hopefully you see, yeah, we're putting a subscript onto a polyatomic ion, so we have to put parentheses around that, and so it's FeNO3-2 as our formula. Next we have mang manganese for chloride. So manganese is Mn, we'll write that down here, and the charge, as the Roman numeral tells us, is a positive 4. Now chloride has the formula ClO2, and its charge is negative 1. And by the way, I'm getting these charges and these formulas right off of the ion chart. Now, these don't cancel, do they? So I have to swap them. We don't write ones, but we do write the four down here. And as you can see, we don't want that to look like a 24, do we? And we want that four to apply to the entire ion. So I'll put a set of parentheses around that. And here we have the formula for manganese for chloride. Now, if you want to start counting up how many atoms 
are in here? Well, we can see that there's just one manganese atom, but there are actually four chlorine atoms, right? Because there's one in every uh, chloride ion, but it's multiplied by four. So there are four chlorines, and do you see how there are also eight oxygen atoms? You know, there were two, but the four is multiplied by that. So it's four times two, eight atoms. And so if you were asked how many total atoms are in a formula unit of this compound, well, we've got eight oxygens and four chlorines and a manganese. So it looks like we have 13 atoms total in that compound, in that formula unit. Let's go on to a few more examples, a little bit more uh, complex possibly. We have cesium dihydrogen phosphate. So we'll start with the cesium here. And so cesium is just CS. I'll write that down. Now dihydrogen phosphate is, uh, it is an ion. It's found on the ion chart. And its formula is just H2PO4. Now CS is a positive one and dihydrogen phosphate is a negative one. So we don't have to swap those, do we? We just have that as our, as our formula. So it's CSH2PO4. Let's go on to a few that are a bit more complex. Let's try lead 4 oxide. Now lead, of course, is Pb, and its charge is a positive 4. Oxide is O, oxygen, and its charge is negative 2. And those, of course, don't cancel out, so we're going to have to swap them. Right? So you'd think we'll put a 2 down here and a 4 here. Well, that looks right, but do you see that we can simplify this down? This is like in algebra when you have a, a fraction or something else that you can simplify down. We can divide both of those by 2. And so really the answer is not going to be PB2O4. It's actually going to be PBO2. And that's the formula for lead 4 oxide. So notice that if it's possible to simplify down your subscripts, it's okay to do that, as long as you're not messing with the uh, subscripts in a polyatomic ion. You can't do that. We'll see an example of that later. But let's take a look at another one here, sodium peroxide. So we have sodium, which is Na, and its charge is a positive 1. And then we have peroxide, which is O2, and its charge is negative 2. Now, those don't swap, so we have to cancel them. Of course, we don't write the 1s, but the 2 will go down here. Now, do we cancel out these and just call it NaO? Well, we don't, because if we did that, we'd be messing with this 2, which is a subscript in peroxide. Uh, we cannot mess or somehow change the subscripts that are part of a polyatomic ion. And so that's why we can't change that. Sodium peroxide is going to have to be Na2O2. By the way, if you ever see a formula that has uh, subscripts that kind of look like they might need to be simplified but aren't, that's a giveaway that you have a polyatomic ion in there. So that kind of helps you to name some of these as we'll see in our next video. Let's try another example. We have silver dichromate. Silver is Ag with a positive 1. And dichromate is Cr2O7 with a negative 2. So once again, it looks like we have to swap them. So the 2 goes down here on silver. So we can see we have a formula unit with looks like 11 atoms in it. Ag2, Cr2O7. Now, in these next several examples, we're going to try to go a bit faster. Once again, the goal is not just to be able to write these formulas, but to write them quickly and accurately. And so in AP Chemistry, our goal is to do this in a more advanced way than we did in, in first-year chemistry. So if we have a barium phosphate here, once again, barium is Ba, positive 2, and phosphate is PO4, negative 3. So we see that we have to swap them, so Ba3, put some parentheses around the phosphate to put the 2 there. Okay, So keep on moving here. Nickel 2 hydroxide. Nickel 2 is Ni with a positive 2 charge. Hydroxide is OH 
with a negative 1 charge. So once again, we've got to swap those charges. The 2 goes down here on the hydroxide. Don't forget to put the parentheses around hydroxide. It is, I mean, hydroxide is a polyatomic ion. So we have to put the parentheses around that whenever we stick an, an additional subscript on it. Lead 4 carbonate. So lead 4 is Pb with a plus 4 charge. Then we have the carbonate, which is CO3 with a negative 2 charge. And so we've got to swap them. You'd think it would be a 2 and a 4, right? But don't forget, we have to simplify it like we did earlier with the lead 4 oxide. So we're going to have to make this not a 2 and a 4, but a 1 and a 2, like this. And of course, parentheses around the carbonate. Calcium oxalate. So calcium is Ca with a plus 2 charge. And oxalate is a polyatomic ion. It's C2O4. It has a negative 2 charge. And so we don't swap them, do we? Because they, they cancel out. So it's just CaC2O4. So we have a, a formula unit with, looks like, seven atoms in it this time. Let's try a few more examples to finish up here. Magnesium acetate. So magnesium is Mg with a positive 2 charge. And acetate is a polyatomic ion, C2H3O2, with a negative 1 charge. And we do have to swap those. You know, they don't cancel. So parentheses and a 2 if I, whoops, if I have room here. So there's, there's a little 2 there. The next example is cobalt-3-cyanide. So cobalt is CO with a plus 3 charge. Cyanide is CN with a negative 1 charge. We gotta swap them, don't we? Because those obviously don't cancel. So a 3 goes down here, and cyanide is a polyatomic ion, so we've got to stick parentheses around that. So COCN3. Do you see how many atoms are in a formula unit of cobalt 3 cyanide? Well, we have three carbons, three nitrogens, and a cobalt. So that looks like it adds up to seven total atoms there. Zinc silicate. So we don't use silicate too often, but we can find it on the ion chart there. Zinc, of course, is Zn with a plus 2. Silicate, if we look at the ion chart, is SiO3 with a negative 2 charge. And we don't have to swap those since they cancel out, so it's just Zn SiO3. Once again, we're trying to build up some speed here. That's why I'm going pretty quickly through these. The last example, aluminum periodate. So we have aluminum, which is Al, with a plus 3 charge. And then we have periodate, which is IO4, with a negative 1 charge. And so do we cancel those, or do we have to swap them? Well, they don't cancel, so we have to swap them. So the 3 goes down here, and parentheses around the periodate. And do you see how many atoms are in a formula unit of this? Well, we have one aluminum, three iodine atoms, and looks like four times three, 12 oxygen. So looks like that adds up to about 16 atoms in a formula unit of that compound. Well, I, I hope you learned some chemistry. I, I hope you uh, got to see how uh, these ionic compounds are uh, written whenever you write the formulas for them. If you like the video, or at the very least, if you learned something, please give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, then uh, hit that subscribe button. And I hope to see you back here in my complete AP Chemistry course where we can learn some more chemistry together.